We know that the current theory is that at the heart of galaxies sits a supermassive black hole. These can either be dormant or can be feeding on material, in which case these are referred to as active galactic nuclei. But what happens when multiple galaxies collide? On the 28th of June, Ryan Feifel presented a set of eight previously unknown dual or triple active galactic nuclei at the annual meeting of the European Astronomical Society. These images come from merging galaxies in which the black holes are actively feeding on material. The problem is that observing these active galactic nuclei is not easy. When the galaxies merge, there is a lot of material that ends up obscuring the centre. So instead, they hunt for them by looking for an infrared signature which would identify dust which has absorbed energy from the active galactic nuclei and then re-emitted it as infrared. They then follow up these observations by looking at the X-ray image to confirm the energy signature. Galaxy mergers are rare and triple galaxy mergers are even more rare. The question is, why do we not see more of these mergers if the sole driver for these mergers is gravity? I think there are two issues that need further discussion in the context of a plasma and electric universe. If we assume an Eric Lerner model for the plasmoid at the centre, then the first question becomes what happens when more plasma is directed towards the plasmoid? Let's assume that the active galactic nuclei in each of these galaxies was dormant before the merger, so the plasmoid was slowly decaying. What is unclear is what happens when new material is fed into the vicinity of the plasmoid. Could this re-energize the plasmoid and cause it to fire up again? The experiments Eric Lerner conducted were based on an initial plasma sheath forming the plasmoid, and his equipment was not capable of injecting additional plasma after the formation process. From Bostick's experiments, we know that it is possible for plasmoids to join together, so is it such a huge leap to suggest that additional plasma could be absorbed by the existing active galactic nuclei plasmoid? The next question is, why are these events so rare? Now, I think it's obvious that gravity is not the driver for these. At these distances, I don't believe that gravity really plays any role at all. But that still doesn't answer the question of why they are so rare. Now, it could be that they are very difficult to detect or that these events are very short-lived, in which case we would end up missing most of them. There is, however, another possibility. Now, we know that Halton Arp viewed a birthing process whereby quasars were ejected from active galactic nuclei and that these quasars later turned into normal galaxies. We know that our own Milky Way is surrounded by dwarf galaxies. So it is possible that over time these dwarf galaxies re-merge with a host and the process restarts. But this leads back to the question of why we do not see more of these events happening. Now alternatively, if we look at Bostick's work on plasmoids, we can see that in most cases galaxies should repel each other, meaning that this should not actually happen often. He also showed that in some cases the plasmoids could end up being attracted and joined together. Could it be that both galaxies were formed by the host but were not ejected away far enough? Did they in fact form inside the host rather than outside? Or were these three separate galaxies that were flowing along different intergalactic Birkeland currents that happened to intersect? Can these vast Birkeland currents wander and cross over? Could it be that a galaxy was ejected from one stream and collided with another? As you can see, there are many questions that these images raise. Let me know what you think might cause these mergers. On Monday, the Eric Lerner Quasar Plasmoid model will be coming out, so, so look out for that because that will help you to understand how the plasmoid forms in his model and how it can represent these active galactic nuclei. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.